SpaceX has done so many great things that we don't even get surprised at their achievements anymore. They made a rocket launch, return, land, and fly again, something that had never happened before in history. On top of that, they caught a returning Starship booster with the Makazilla arms in midair, a concept that sounded impossible just a few years ago. But the idea they just came up with might be the most unique one yet. And in this video, we're going to talk about the full details. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. So it might sound crazy, but SpaceX is basically planning to use an oil rig as a Starship landing platform. And to understand why they even came up with this idea, we first need to look at what they're doing right now. At the moment, SpaceX lands the Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla Tower at Starbase. And sometimes they don't land it at all. They just let it splash into the ocean. Catching a 69-meter booster with giant mechanical arms is one of the boldest things SpaceX has ever attempted. But it comes with a huge risk. Elon Musk has said it very clearly. We can lose the rocket, but we cannot lose the launch tower. The tower is so expensive and so critical for Starship operations that a single bad landing could destroy years of work. That's why SpaceX is now experimenting with the idea of landing Starship and the booster using landing legs, similar to the Falcon 9. If they can reliably land it on its own legs, they won't have to risk the tower every single time. But this introduces a new problem. Starship is not Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 is 3.7 meters wide and around 70 meters tall, and SpaceX has mastered landing it from almost any angle and in almost any weather. Starship, on the other hand, is a whole different scale. It's the biggest rocket ever made. The full stack stands 120 meters tall, 69 meters for the super heavy booster, and roughly 50 meters for the upper stage. Its diameter is 9 meters, more than twice as wide as Falcon 9, and every part of it is heavier, more complex, and produces far more force during landing. Falcon 9 lands on drone ships like Of Course I Still Love You, which is about 91 meters long and 52 meters wide. That's enough for a 3.7 meter wide rocket, but Starship is 9 meters wide, more than double that. And it's not just the width. The mass and thrust numbers are on a completely different scale. The Starship booster alone weighs over 3,000 tons during landing, and the entire system generates around 7,500 tons of thrust at liftoff. Trying to land something this massive on a scaled-up version of a Falcon 9 drone ship is not as simple as just making the platform bigger. SpaceX actually explored the idea of developing a dedicated Starship drone ship, but the numbers immediately became unrealistic. A stable platform capable of catching or landing the Super Heavy booster would need to be somewhere around 400 to 450 meters long and about 250 to 300 meters wide. For context, the largest aircraft carrier in the world is 333 meters long and 77 meters wide. Even that wouldn't be large enough. A Starship drone ship wouldn't just be a ship anymore. It would be a floating island. It would also need a displacement of hundreds of thousands of tons, along with huge stabilizers and an advanced power system just to keep it steady on the ocean. Building something like this would cost billions of dollars and take years or even a decade to develop. It simply didn't make sense. So SpaceX looked for a different approach. And that's when offshore oil rigs entered the picture. Semi-submersible oil rigs are absolutely massive structures. Many of them are 80 to 100 meters long, 60 to 80 meters wide, and have deck areas of more than 15,000 to 20,000 square meters. More importantly, they are designed to stay stable in rough seas because most of their mass sits underwater, which reduces movement dramatically. They can displace anywhere from 50,000 to over 100,000 tons and are built to support drilling equipment that weighs thousands of tons. Instead of developing an entirely new megaship, SpaceX purchased two decommissioned oil rigs named Phobos and Deimos for about $3.5 million each. 
That price is incredibly low compared to the billions it would cost to build a custom Starship landing platform from scratch. All SpaceX has to do is modify them, reinforce the deck, install the catching system, add fuel storage and integration facilities, and prepare the platform for Starship and Super Heavy operations. There are multiple factors that make offshore landings essential for Starship's future. First, the noise levels. A Starship launch generates more than 180 decibels of sound. That's enough to break windows and damage buildings miles away. Even the landing burn of the booster is extremely loud. Doing that near a populated area isn't realistic or safe. Offshore platforms solve that problem by placing the blast zone far from cities. Another reason is SpaceX's long-term goal of point-to-point -point travel. Starship is meant to fly from one continent to another in 30 to 45 minutes. And while SpaceX is figuring out how to land Starship safely without risking the launch tower, they're also breaking records with the Falcon 9 at the same time. Their launch cadence has been rising every single year. In 2022, they reached 61 launches. In 2023, they pushed that to 96. In 2024, they hit 134 launches, which was more than half of all orbital launches that year. And now in 2025, they've already passed 133 launches, and the year isn't even over yet, which means they're on track to break their own record again. What makes this even more impressive is the consistency. Falcon 9 has one of the highest success rates in the history of rocketry. Out of hundreds of flights, failures are extremely rare, and booster landings have become routine. They've now reused boosters and fairings more than 300 times, which is a milestone no one else in the world is close to. That reuse is the key to their dominance. A fully expendable rocket normally costs tens of millions more than a reused Falcon 9. For SpaceX, the marginal cost of launching a reused booster is roughly in the range of $15 million, while a brand new rocket would traditionally cost several times that amount. Because they reuse the booster, the fairings, and refine their refurbishment process, the cost per flight drops massively. In earlier years, refurbishing a booster cost over $10 million. Now it's closer to a fraction of that because the process is so optimized. When you multiply that cost reduction across more than 300 reused flights, the total savings reach well into the billions of dollars. And that saved money isn't sitting in a bank somewhere. It's being poured directly into Starship development, new factories, new launch infrastructure, and faster iteration. SpaceX is basically funding Starship by flying Falcon 9 over and over again at the lowest cost in the industry. Despite all the record-breaking launches and booster recoveries by SpaceX, NASA is signaling that SpaceX might not be enough on its own. NASA has opened up the moon lander competition to other companies and is moving parts of its contract away from SpaceX. That's why they opened a second lunar lander contract and gave it to Blue Origin. Blue Origin received a multi-billion dollar deal to compete with SpaceX's Starship lander for future Artemis missions. But when you compare the performance of both companies, the difference is huge. SpaceX is flying more than 100 missions a year, landing boosters almost every time and reusing them hundreds of times. Meanwhile, Blue Origin has been around since 2000, but has only flown its New Shepard suborbital rocket about 30-something times, and those are short tourist flights that don't reach orbit. Their first orbital rocket, New Glenn, only recently made it to space after years of delays, and even then the booster wasn't recovered. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.